believe the, the kingdom may, I, I believe the kingdom of God is within you but I also believe we are now living in the age of grace that Paul preached there's a difference between the two dispensations the kingdom was coming in the day of Jesus Christ but was postponed for the age of the Gentiles in the kingdom age magical things happen it sounds like what you mentioned above but in the age of grace God can say no I mean Paul prayed twice to have a thorn removed from his side and it wasn't removed basically you are admitting something that Muslims say and that is that Christians follow the religion of Paul and not the religion of Jesus correct me if I'm wrong Christians in the day in the age of grace the age of uh, in, in the day of age, in, in, in this day and age, the age of grace, are supposed to follow the risen Christ through Paul. Yes, that is correct. <sighs> uh, you can also, you can follow the kingdom age and believe it's for this day and age and still be saved, I feel, but you'll be gravely disappointed if you feel that praying will cure your child of his diabetes unless it's, a, unless it's the grace of God to cure that child remember Paul prayed twice to have a thorn removed who knows what that thorn was but it wasn't removed and Paul had a lot of faith in Jesus Christ starting on his road to Damascus when Paul started on the road to Damascus, it was to kill Christians, if I remember the story correctly. It is on the road that he met with Jesus, and if I recall the testimony of Paul, in two instances, they were, re they were varying as to what happened. And you think? You don't know? Of course, uh, couldn't Paul have been planning on killing Christians and then met Jesus at the same time? Now I am not thinking here is what it states. Acts 9, 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the sim synagogues, that if he found any of, on, of his any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound in unto Jerusalem. So clearly he was on his way there to kill Christians. Uh, he was a uh, he was a killer of Christians, no doubt about it. He also held the code of Stephen as Stephen was martyred through stoning. Okay, so now that we know that in Second Thessalonians two eleven, God says that He will allow the wicked to be deceived. So now Paul is on his way to kill believers in God. Could God not allow him to be deceived, thinking he met Jesus, but in fact didn't? I guess it all depends on who you want to believe, who you want to uh, believe God is sending through, uh, sending strong delusion, uh, delusion to. Uh, doesn't it? Um, and to me, if that delusion results in the eternal da uh, torment of the one God is sending delusion to, then hey, Muslims are right about Jews, Christians, and Muslims uh, all, uh, all worshipping the same God, true? We are then all worshipping Allah, aren't we? I mean, again, I'll say this again. It all depends on who you want to believe God is sending strong delusion to, doesn't it? And if that strong delusion results in the eternal damnation of the one being made delusional, hey, well, the Muslims are right on about Jews, Christians, and Muslims all worshipping the same God, aren't they? We are, then, all worshipping Allah, it seems. That is what the Muslims keep saying. And we say... And what we say is that the Jews have deviated because they don't accept the Messiah Jesus. The Christians have deviated because they make the Messiah an equal with God. That is what we have been trying to tell you. I'm glad that you finally got to the point where you, um, where you understand. And the verses are clear. God allows the wicked, deceitful, to be deceived. <sighs> 
I didn't think Muslims were. I didn't think Muslims weren't follow weren't to fo- I, You know, I didn't think Muslims weren't to follow the writings of Saint Paul. Of course, there are some Quranic scriptures I came upon that make it sound like they are. There are no Quranic scriptures that I know of that says Muslims follow Paul or that or that Paul was even a messenger. If you have some scriptural, please provide them, and uh, we will look at it. If not, can you explain five uh, sixty-eight? Yusuf Ali says. O people of the book, you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand firm upon the law, the gospel, and all the revelation that has come to you from your Lord. Uh, what is the quote, and all the revelation that has come to you uh, from your Lord? Doesn't that include the writings of St. Paul? You, as a Muslim, might not have to follow St. Paul, but the Quran seems to be telling those who have read the before scriptures to stand firm upon uh, what's on all, uh, all the revelation that has come to you. But, even though it doesn't say Muslims are to follow in a way, hey, thanks to Quran 1094, which says, uh, this is Yusuf Ali, if thou wert in doubt as to what we have revealed unto thee, then ask those who have been reading the, be- the book before, before thee, that is, the Bible, which contains the writings of Paul. The truth hath indeed come to thee from thy Lord, so be in no wise of those in doubt. And this is also, this also Shakir, Shakir says, But if you were in doubt as to what we have revealed to you, ask those who have read the, be- read the book before you. Uh, the book is the Bible. But, yeah, that book is the Bible. And during the writing of the Quran, the writings of Paul were a part of the New Testament by then. Seems to me, if the Bible were corrupted uh, then, um, if, if, I tell you what, I want to tell you this. The book seems to be the Bible. And during the writings of the Quran, the writings of Paul were a part of the New Testament by then. Seems to me, if the Bible were corrupted by then, abrogating the Quran. Two, verse 106 would have kicked in and told the reader to not to go to those like me who have read the quote book unquote if you were in doubt about the Quran I mean has your faith increased in the Quran since you started talking to me about the before scriptures which I've read have they, has your faith increased in the Quran or not People of the book is referred to those who follow the Torah, and again, the context of the verse is clear. It is with regards to the story of Moses and Pharaoh. Have you read the Torah? If you have, will you notice that atonement for sin most, comes mostly from the sacrifice of some poor innocent animal? How is... how? How this could be equated with the Quran in being a, a guide as the Quran is, well, to me, mind-boggling when you believe the Quran is supposed to be guidance and light. Like the Torah is supposed to be guidance and light. As a Muslim, we still do the sacrifice as practiced by Abraham. However, we don't burn the meat. We share it with the people. And you sacrifice for... In the Torah, there is a mention of burnt offerings and sacrifices of animals. There is the Passover lamb blood, and the lamb was to be spotless. Are sacrifices of animals the same as in Islam? Are they, are they for sin? Or if Christianity is false? Or, if Christianity is false, is it because God just likes smelling burning animal flesh? It is all tied to the Abraham, Abraham story. The entire Hajj process is for Abraham's life. Abraham. Where does it say in the Quran or Hadith, you are to go to me and others who have read the before scriptures to find out about 
what happens with Moses and Pharaoh. If so, it is because Pharaoh in the Quran seems to have two, uh, two different ends to him. Is that it? As Pharaoh does have two different ends to him in the Quran. You quoted the verse. Go and read the context of the verse, and you will see what it says. You can watch my video where I talk about this topic. Is it babbling about Babel or Muhammad with no prophet response? If I go there, will I find out why you are to come to me for uh, my reading of the quote before scriptures? And if so, can't you just simply get to the point and put it here as to why? As to why you need uh, to come to me for my uh, reading the quote before scriptures if you are in doubt about the Quran?